Okay, so welcome to our follow through and overlapping animation tutorial. This is just an overview of our project that we'll be going over in class. Um, what we're trying to do is have this figure move as if it's being influenced by the movement of our minecart. So if I hit play, you'll see that that figure is being influenced by the primary movement which is the cart animation so that is the follow through and overlapping animation that overlapping animation is obviously the action right here occurring and you'll notice I even have a setup for our wheels so that way when we move this cart around you'll see that it automatically will roll and I'll explain how we do that as well so what we're going to be working with in this project is going to be our minecart that we will create out of a cube we'll make these wheels out of a cylinder and we're going to connect those up using something new that we haven't talked about in the past so this is going to be a brand new thing called an expression editor and it'll be kind of not so complex but it'll be something um, that it kind of is a little bit of code but as long as you follow the numbers I'm adding it's not like you have to invent it on your own um, it'll be uh, pretty straightforward so bear with me uh, I do have a cold so this is fun recording right now so let's just do a review okay so we have this movement going on I'm gonna save that and let's start from scratch. Let's figure out how we put this whole thing together. So I'm gonna do a new scene. And the first thing I'm gonna do is my, uh, I'm gonna make my railroad. So I'm gonna go into my poly modeling, make a cube, stretch that thing out, squash it down. And these will be my railroad uh, ties, I believe is what that's called, or the planks. And I'm gonna move that over to the edge over here. Maybe shrink it down just a little bit. All right, let's learn about a new tool, and that's going to be our Edit Duplicate Special. Before I do that, I need to make sure I name this something that makes sense. So, Railroad Tie, and I add that to a layer. course my windows aren't popping up to be able to rename that that should just show up by default uh, double click on that and change that name for now I'm going to keep that in layer one okay so if I go into edit duplicate special you'll notice that it does something different so if I hit control D that just gives me another object and it's gonna take a long time for me to be able to copy out this railroad and it's not gonna exactly be precise so if I go into edit duplicate special and you'll notice I have some options here. One of those options is my translate. Now I know I want more to go along my X axis here, and that's the first one, so X, Y, Z. So what I'm gonna do is tell this, maybe at a two, move over and make another one. And by copies, let's say maybe 30 of those. We can also adjust things like rotate and scale, but that's not something we need to deal with for now. We only wanna make this duplicate along the x-axis so every time it makes one it applies this translation of two and then puts another one down and then it makes another one and another one so I'm gonna hit apply and it created this I think I can keep that okay so Next up, I'm going to go ahead and create a cube. Scale that, move it down. Move it over here. I'm going to right click on this again. So I was in my face mode to move that, scale it. 
I'm actually going to go and grab this one. So still in face. So right click object face and then go over here and pull that out all the way over to there. All right. So there's a track. I'm going to hit control D this time, not control duplicate special because you'll have a ton of those. Just duplicate. All right. Try and make it lined up as best as possible. Okay. So I've got a sort of railroad. Now I'm going ahead and create my cart. So I have a cube again. Move that up. And let's right click, go to face mode again. Scale this out. Scale the whole thing up. Maybe squish the top face in a little bit like this. So it looks a little bit something like this. Okay, I have this selected. I'm gonna go into my modeling toolkit. I'm just gonna press bevel. It's a little too intense. I'm gonna drop that fraction down. Maybe a 0.1, okay, that looks pretty good. Now I have this. I'm gonna go to select my face mode, select that middle part, and I'm gonna do extrude. And by extrude, I'm gonna extrude in the middle. So I'm going to press this button right here. This is an extrude on a scale. So I'll do that first without touching anything, just clicking on it. And now I'm going to scale in. And you'll notice it gave me these four faces. That's good. Now I can hit extrude again, or I can hit the G key. I'm going to hit the G key this time. And that brings out my last action. And my last action was to apply an, uh, an extrude. So I have another extrude. I'm going to pull that down. Cool. I'm going to scale that a little bit more to fit. So now I have sort of a minecart looking shape. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to call this my demo. You don't need to call this demo. Okay. So now I'm going to make my wheel. And there's an easy way to make a wheel. I'm going to start with a shape, so my cylinder. I am going to rotate that cylinder. So I want that to be 90 degrees on its X axis. So now it's facing this way. I'm going to delete by going to my face mode. So right click face, all of these. I'm going to hit delete. And now I'm just left with this cap. That's good. I'm going to go into my edge mode by right clicking on my object and going to edge. And I'm going to double click. It's going to go all the way around that edge. If I click on my modeling toolkit, I'm going to press extrude, pull that out. And I'm going to go into my selection tool, Q. Right click on my object by face. I'm going to go around every single other one of these. I'm just hit delete. Now I'm left with this shape. Okay, I'm gonna go into face mode now. So, or I was in face, sorry. I'm gonna just select the whole thing and hit extrude. I'm gonna pull back on that. And oh no, that went black. That is okay. All I have to do, right click, object mode. I'm going to go to my mesh display, reverse, and there is sort of a wheel. Now if you want to make this better, there's a couple things we can do. We can just go select this and that, and then double click. And notice when I double clicked, it actually selected all of the faces around this um, edge loop. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to select here, here, double click, and it did that for me over here pretty cool. I'm going to press extrude again and pull out. Awesome. So now I have a little bit more definition on this wheel. This is an easy cheesy way to get some definition. It's, it's not the best looking wheel, but it didn't take too much time to get something that we can actually see moving in motion, right? So I need to make sure I label these things correctly. So this was my cart. 
and I'm going to name that cart and that's my wheel so I'm going to call this wheel underscore R1 now I'm going to move that over try and figure out where that needs to go here scale that down I want to make it look it's kind of resting on the rail so that's good I might need to scale this thing up a little bit so it fits there that's okay even if they're rubbing a little bit there it's okay or intersecting I mean that's not bad all right I'm gonna hit control D duplicate that and move that over if you'll notice I had R1 named here when I duplicate and I have a naming convention, it tries to sequence that. So now that's R2, that's super helpful. I'm gonna move that forward just a little bit more to try and make that match up. Now I'm gonna have both of these selected, duplicate and move that over onto the other side. Now I've got four wheels. Now it's still in R and notice this is four and this is three. So let's change that. I'm gonna make this L2 and L1. So now I'm just keeping that standard naming convention. I'm gonna make sure all of these that are selected, I'm gonna select the cart now, and remember to parent, I'm gonna hit P. Now wherever my cart goes, it goes. Now it's not really going anywhere. It's kind of boring, the wheels aren't moving. So what we can do is open something up, and that is going to be underneath Windows Animation Expression Editor. And what I need to be able to do is select one of these wheels. So you'll see a wheel R1. And we need to be able to figure out our rotation. So that's rotate Z. So wheel R1 rotate Z is what we're gonna work with for our expression editor. And it's best just to see what's going on here um, for an explanation. So let's just see what this expression editor is gonna do. So if I have this, I have the wheel R1 and the rotate Z, and I copy that. So I can just hit Control C, Control V. And I have that down in my expression. I'm gonna say that that is equal cart dot translate x slash 3.14 and times oh, negative 360. So this code right here is going to tell this wherever this cart goes, as long as that's named cart. So if this isn't working, make sure your naming conventions are the same. So if you change these naming conventions, it's not going to work. So right now I have wheel R1, I have my cart, there's the cart, translate, which means move, and then the math here. Now I'm not great at math. But I know that if I add this, it will apply something interesting. So if I create, and now I have my cart move, <gasps> notice it is moving wherever, the wheels are rotating wherever I move this cart. This is super helpful. I'm gonna undo, just to get myself back to that spot. I still have that in there. You may wonder where did it go? Well, just go back into your tribute. So under the rotate Z, it's back there. So I'm actually gonna copy this. So copy that one, grab your next wheel. Wheel R2, rotate Z, paste it. Just make sure you swap out the two. Hit create, and now there's two wheels working. Going all the way around. I got this one, rotate, paste. This is L1, create. Okay, that's good. This one, rotate, and that's L2, create, whoops, 
clear will clear out that code, so we don't want to do that. And again, we are not coders. This is something that, yes, it is complicated, but if I could get this to work, I know you guys can get this to work. Not too intense. Why this is extremely helpful? Because now I don't have to animate those wheels moving. I can just grab this cart, move it left or right, and it's going to animate correctly. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to save my work. All right, I need to create a character so that they can ride inside this cart. First, I'm going to turn off my x ray. I'm going to go into the poly modeling panel or the ribbon and create a cylinder. Move this up. Go into my inputs and change my radius to maybe like a 0.7. And I'm going to change my height to about a 5 and my subdivision height to about a 20. So this is going to be a lot of resolution that way. That's good. Now I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this Tom Body. You can call it whatever you need to to be able to keep track of it. I'm also going to create a head. So I'm going to press the Create Sphere. Go into here and change my axis and height to 16. All right, that's pretty nice and round. Scale that down and then hold down the V key and snap that up to the top. So I know it's gonna snap somewhere because if we look at our wireframe on shaded, there is always a central vertex on the cap of our cylinder. So holding down the V key and snapping that, if it's not working, go into shading go into your x-ray and you should be able to find where that is holding on the V key just snap and then that should work for you so okay turn off wireframe and x-ray that's good scale that down now parent the head so Tom head, to the body so having that selected select the body next hit P now that is all one unit and I'm going to hit save and go to deform nonlinear bend. Now, where is it? Well, let's go back into x ray. It's right here. Open this up under inputs. Right here, if we go under curvature and hit 20, you'll notice now it's curving. So we need to set this up a little bit better because it's curving in the middle of our object. I'm actually going to hold down the V key again and pull this down until it snaps on the base of my figure. Make sure it's snapping right at the bottom. Now the high bound right now is right here. That's where it ends. So let's go a little bit extreme here, 60. You'll notice it stops curving at around here. That's wherever that stops, it just goes and ends that curvature. So we don't actually want it to end there. Let's hit zero again. Let's see where we need to be. I'm gonna pull this upwards and that's maybe too much. Let's say 1.2, not enough, 1.4, too much, 1.3. Okay, perfect. So that bounds is good. If I didn't do this, the head would deform too much if it was up too high. So this ends that um, bend right at the base of that skull, which is really good for me. All right, so now if I have this object move around, notice the bend isn't coming with it. We need to parent the bend to that object. So hit P again. All right, so now everything is coming along. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna put Tom inside of his mine cart. So I'm gonna shade, x-ray, okay, good. Let's move this up. Make him look like he's sitting in there. That's pretty good. Might be a little too high up. Let's just adjust that. There we go. Even if he's sinking in there, that's okay. We're not gonna see the bottom of that. All right. So, I need to animate this thing so it is a minecart, but I wanna make it so it starts off slow and then accelerates and slams into the end. And then it starts off slow again, accelerates and slams into the end. So how I would do that, let's just start a keyframe here. And then maybe at around 30. Oh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to parent our object. So I need to grab my 
main object, which is Tom body, everything else connected to it, select my cylinder or my mine cart here and hit P. And now wherever that goes, it should follow. So I have it here. I'm going to go to 30. I'm going to move that all the way to the end. And notice it's following now. Good. And I'm going to hit keyframe. Okay. So I have it start over here and end over there. But let's look at our graph editor. So window animation editors graph editor. It's starting off slow and accelerating and then slowing down as it gets to the end. That's not that's not exciting. Let's put Tom through some some torture here. So we're going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to grab that last key and I'm going to break that tangent. Now if I drag that to something like this, it's going to start off slow and accelerate. So let's check out what's going on here. So let's look at this again. Alright, so he's really accelerating, but it looks a little bit unnatural. So let's do it again. All right, so slow, 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 fast, 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 okay. Maybe just a little bit less. You know what? He deserves this. Let's go a little bit more. There we go. All right, so it's accelerating, stopping, and then maybe it around up to you, 80. I have no idea why that copied all of those. So we're just gonna copy that one keyframe. It's gonna be a duplicate just to hold there. Something's going on in our, our graph editor. I'll show that in a second. I'm gonna go and copy that frame at 120. These numbers are arbitrary. Do not follow along to this. They may not look good. Uh, I'm just adding something so I can view it in my graph editor. Okay. Look what's happening here. Holy cow. I only have one, two, three, four nodes here, but something weird is happening here. It's, it's adding an animation in the middle here that I didn't even ask for. We can get rid of that by making these two a linear um, interpretation between these. So I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to um, just select this one again and move that down to ramp that up. And then I'm going to have this one. I'm going to again select that node and break the tangents and do something like that. So it's going to start and then dip down and so accelerate. All right, let's see what we got here. Nope, that's going backwards. Hold on. Okay. Now, if you don't want this to keep playing, press this again and you notice play once is on. So if I play through that, it's not going to repeat, which is good if I don't want it to repeat. So there it is, and there it is again. Good. Now I got to make this character act like it is reacting and utilizing follow through and overlapping animation. So if I go in here, and it's a hard time to find my bend modifier. If you can't find that, you could always go inside your outliner and try and dig around for that in here. So remember, we parented things. So they're going to be underneath other things here. So. There's this, there's this, there's this. Here's the bend handle. Okay, good. There it is. So I'm going to start with my curvature at zero. And then as I move and accelerate, I know it only goes to 30, I'm going to start to make this thing accelerate. So let's say maybe negative 20 here. These are arbitrary. I want you to figure this out because this is not actually done at any finesse. I'm just using this as an example, just to have something that we can view.
so maybe at around here I can go in the opposite direction to 50 key selection let's see what happened so at first using our curvature at 0 it's straight up and down moving forward he's fighting gravity at one point um, I have it at around negative 20 and then going back or, or down to negative 25 so maybe I can actually dip this uh, to negative 15 a little bit so he's like fighting um, the g-force so he's moving up a little bit here and then he gets pulled back down again and then slam 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 Oh, Tom Cruise okay so here we go he's slamming in there but he has to react to that he's not just gonna hit forward he's gonna bounce backwards again and then negative maybe 40 so we can key that so whiplash and then bring him back the opposite direction To possibly around 30 so each time he's uh, that force is degrading on his body so it's not impacting him as much so let's see that's too fast remember hold down shift left click drag across your keyframes if you need to select them and then drag that out so we can expand these if it's if it feels like that movement was just too fast okay so we could do that. We want to smooth that out. So at some point, he'll just uh, sit straight up in here. So maybe at around here, he'll sit straight up. And then maybe he'll sulk a little bit or something. So let's see what we got. Slam, sitting straight up. Maybe he sighs to catch his breath. And then all of a sudden, it starts to pick up again now let's see how can I make this cart feel like there was an impact at the end well I could take this at frame 30 and then make that move up in the air a little bit so I'm gonna actually add a keyframe at frame 29 that's the same thing so 29 it's right here at frame 30 I'm gonna make it look like it's bounced up and over a little bit like that and then I just need it to go back to that same position like this so what I could do is just grab this keyframe right here from uh, 80 and maybe paste that right here let's see what we got alright it's not over emphasized enough or at least that, that action hasn't been emphasized enough of that cart kind of going a little bit crazy so let's see if we can do that this way all right way better subtle movements are lost on keyframes when they're very close together but if we have a large movement there way better probably want some barrels or something there to stop it or stoppers at the end of the track but you get to what I'm trying to do here so just three frames just to add that slam can really help Okay, so obviously I'd like you to texture this up. We can add a camera to track that. But this is what we're trying to do. Let me bring up that last scene that we were just looking at to see a finished version of what I'm looking for. Okay. So I want this lit as well. I didn't like this. And I want the camera to be able to track all motion Okay, let's watch that. Okay, we are getting into character performance. I want this little character to feel like he's getting tossed around and react. Maybe he pops up in the air like this right here when he realizes he's being taken for a ride again. So watch as this occurs. He's like, oh no, not again. And here it goes again. Notice it doesn't end right away. I want to give some rest at the end of my animation. I want my viewer to realize this was an ordeal. 
So I want them to see that character react to the actions that happened upon it. And that's it for this demo.